So hi everyone. Hello. Hi. This is Patty. Hi. I'm Keegan. And hi. this is the 50s. We've done three other, the 20s, 30s, and 40s. So three other decades. We've done this for how many years now at the library? This started, I think, back in, I want to say, 18. It was well before the pandemic. Well before. We made it to the 70s. Uh, and then the pandemic. It was a week before the pandemic. Yep. It was snowing. We were at Westgate. Yep. And it, that was it. And then we did this presentation in Chelsea on, I think it was March 12th or 11th, <laughs> right before wow. everything. Yeah. Wow. Everything. And I mean, that yeah. was the day that before everything. I remember they even said, like, don't bring food because we can't share food. We, and sure. we can't. Yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah. So we're really excited. We Hopefully are. we don't trigger another pandemic. Yeah, please, let's not. <laughs> if, if we do, I'm blaming Clearly Patty. it's us. <laughs> yeah, if we do, it's your fault. But Aaron got back with us and said, hey, let's start this over again. So here we are. And we're so glad to see you tonight. Thank you so much for coming. So I'm the owner of Pastry Chef the Lake House Bakery. Um, and food has been my life forever. I mean, technically, it's all of our lives because that's how we live. Um, and Patty's been a historian I'd say most of her life. Oh, uh, actually, interestingly, I did not care for history until I was into my 30s. People <laughs> always ask me that. And I, no offense, I'm a school teacher, no offense to history teachers, but the way it was taught in the 80s was chalk and talk, read and answer questions. And it did not grab my ADHD, no. adult, ADHD adult brain at all. No. Um, it wasn't until I moved to Ann Arbor in 2001, I started paying attention and looking up on my walks and noticing the architecture. Um, so yeah, I am a school teacher in Wayne County. I'm a special ed teacher of Algebra 2 and Geometry. I always say it is wonderful to be in a crowd of people who want to be here mm -hmm. and are not going to be like, this is stupid, miss. What am I going <laughs> to learn this in my life? Yeah. So yeah. thank you. And thank you for joining us on Friday. It's not going to storm till after 9, so we'll get yeah. you out in plenty yeah, of time. Yeah, we'll get you out here before then. Yes. So Patty and I just developed this program actually because we were we were hungry <laughs> and we were trying to figure out we were like well what do people eat in the depression and that kind of started things and we were like well we should do a class about this and and we've just kind of gone from there so we're going to talk about the 50s so a lot was going on in the <laughs> 50s like there was a whole lot happening yeah so we had what korean war starts my favorite color tv polio vaccine thank goodness right there on a <laughs> Poor Ros Rosenberg. Yeah. I remember yeah. seeing a documentary on HBO because no one supervised me and I would watch whatever. And I remember <laughs> watching a documentary and being terrified. I was like, oh my God. And of course, Elvis. <laughs> yes. Right? Can't forget Elvis. A, a Supreme Court decision I really like, one of my favorites, Brown versus the Board of Education, mm -hmm. 1954. In Legos. Enough said. Yes, yes. Legos. They're awesome. And there's a little, I like the little emoji of Fidel Castro with his cigar <laughs> with down there in the corner. Yeah. So needless to say, a lot of things happened. And we're going to take, I think in the next slide, or, oh yes, here it is. This is one of the things we, we didn't even realize we were tracking, but <laughs> we've been tracking um, like the workforce, the labor force, how much stuff costs, and farms. And you're going to learn about what farms were doing in the 1950s. Yeah. Um, so you can see up there. Life expectancy actually not that much higher, even mm -hmm. like 70 plus years later, which is uh, um, average salary, $3,000. Yeah. I love the, the 6 million cars, though. Almost 7 million cars on the road. It's a lot. It's pretty good. A loaf of bread, 14 cents? Nice. Right? Yeah, what is it, the lot. 30s where the sliced bread gets invented? Yeah, it was. The uh, machine? We have the, yeah, we have the, uh, the patent, I think, in there. Yeah, so. 1936 for that one. But 3 million unemployed, that's a pretty high number. Mm -hmm. If you think about it, of the population, you know, that's, that's a significant number. And the other thing that we realized as we went through this, that all of these things you don't think relate to food and dining and desserts, but really did. Mm -hmm. And somehow we also got stuck on... Can, you know, um, Colonel Sanders. Colonel Sanders <laughs> is going to show up in every presentation. Every single He's model. always here. He's in, like God. He's yes, always yes, been. Always. So, yes. um, and then, of course, that you can survive nuclear war. We could oh, probably yeah. do an entire presentation on nuclear war ra uh, rations, those little hard tack crackers, which are still there. Yes. So, yes. Yep. So this is just a look back. This We were so excited to find. These are pictures of this library from the 1950s. And I just think it's so cool. You can see the card catalog which I certainly grew up on, oh, yeah, um, and it's much easier to do with Google search, even though I do miss the rifling through. <laughs> Digging through the cards. Yes. Yeah. More library 
ephemera, and that is the layout of this wonderful library, the blueprints, all from the 50s. And, that's, and I love that it's still here. All right, here we go. <laughs> Farms. Farms, 12%. I mean, if you think about all the food that's grown in the 50s, the other thing that we realized that we were tracking was um, processed versus not. Um, mm, and mm -hmm. the average farm being 200 acres, having 12%, that's A, that's a lot of land, and B, that's, that's a lot of food. One day we're going to have to do like a compilation where we track this stuff because oh, it's yeah, really dropped idea. from where we started. Um, I always find favorite things when, I'm do when we're doing research, and I really thought it was interesting. The Oleomargarine Act, <laughs> which had been passed in 1886, got repealed by President Truman because the dairy industry lobbied really hard to get rid of this stuff and taxing the fake butter to the gain of the dairy industry right. and the real butter. Until her dying day, my grand called everything oleomargarine. It was all oleo. I was like, Gran, what is that? Well, I know. But it's, it's in butter, crosswords. It, she, Crossword she, puzzles. She always called it, yeah. <laughs> and the microwave oven patent, right? Like, I think the first one sold for like $1,300. It was really expensive, yes. <laughs> yeah, it was a lot of money. Um, and xanthan gum, it, it's more prevalent now than you'd, be, than you'd think. And this is, again, we've started talking in the 30s and 40s about processed food. And this is where it really starts to come together is ingredients mm -hmm. like xanthan gum becoming more and more a part of the things that are in the food that mm -hmm. you might not necessarily know about. Know what not it that is. it's a bad thing. What it it's a binding agent. So now a lot of gluten-free vegan bakers use it. Mm -hmm. um, and we use it a lot for gluten-free vegan baking because um, without flour, there's nothing to bind everything together. And the xanthan gum will do that. You'll also see it in um, pasteurized egg whites. So when you go to the grocery store and you have a carton of egg whites, you know, if you read the label, it's either xanthan gum or guar gum. Oh, yeah. I've seen guar gum. Yeah. I, okay. Yep. Um, and it's, it, it keeps things from separating. So it's, it, like, it helps emulsify things. It just sounds kind of gross. Okay, right. so um, one of my favorite places, one of my favorite <laughs> things, donuts. Um, the Open Kettle Coffee Company, I just love this. They rename themselves Dunkin' Donuts. Why? Because what do you do with donuts? Duh, you dunk them. So we're going to rename our coffee shop yep. Dunkin' Donuts, and obviously they saw huge, huge, huge success with that. Yep. Craft their deluxe processed cheese food. Mm. They, it actually has to say that now because it's, <laughs> there, there's the laws about cheese, and it has to say cheese food or cheese product food or some, yeah, something Yeah, like, like it's like not that. cheese. It's like a yeah. cheese product yeah. or something. <laughs> no, you really, technically you don't. <laughs> Nope, because it's, it's not. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> right? Yep. Hop along, Cassidy Lunchbox. Mm, Lunchboxes so became a real big thing in yeah. the 50s and 60s. We'll get to the 60s, but yes. this was the beginning of it. Barbecuing, grilling, two different things. Not the same. What? Barbecuing and grilling are not the same. But the popularity across the country started to gain momentum. Um, food from the South started to spread its way across from people moving from the south into the more urban regions where there was jobs. So the food that they cooked went with them and it became more popular. And I, there was a class that I did on the difference between grilling and barbecuing and they're completely different things. Yum. Yep. Um, one of the other things we've kind of looked at throughout the decades is convenience. Not just like eating fast food, but the convenience in making food. Mm -hmm. And as you can see, cakes mix, cake mix had been introduced in the 30s now it really starts getting popular. Um, so we have a picture just of a boxed cake there. It was both General Mills and Pillsbury. It's starting to get popular, and mm -hmm. you're just going to see this trend. We're yep. going to see it in the Jello in a little bit when oh, that yeah. pops up. God love Jello. That is good. Jack in the Box. They're still around, aren't they? And the, and re, it's real regional now. Yeah, I it, don't think it, we it have any. National for a while in the late '70s, early '80s, but yeah. then it's it's gone back regional. I've never ate at one. Green I'm stamps. Good. Oh yes. Who's had green stamps? Yep. Yeah, I got a, a sleeping bag with my green stamps. 
So yeah, so so someone had asked what they are. So and tell me if I'm wrong. My I remember my grandma did it. Like at the grocery store, for everything you bought, you'd get these little, literally little green stamps. You'd put them in a book, and when you saved so many, you could get something. Mm -hmm. The reason I really understood them is because the Brady Bunch had an episode where they maxed out their books, <laughs> and then they're like, "Well, are we gonna buy the sewing machine or the TV or no, the sewing machine or like the rowboat?" And they compromise and buy a TV. It's a very sweet episode. Yeah. But yeah. so you could get it was kind of like a rewards program, mm -hmm. but instead of money, you got stuff. Right. Right. It so was a holdover from the war. Yeah. Oh, that's right. We talked about the yeah, yeah. Yep. See, we're just getting you guys excited for when we start yep. the cycle over again and you come to the 2030s. Yeah. So. Um, Gerber Foods starts to use MSG. So MSG is not a bad thing. Unless I, you're allergic to it, which I don't think many people are. But Yeah, not very. It's, it's kind of like celiac. Um, like 0.1% of the population has celiac, MSG is the same. It's a protein, there's nothing wrong with it. There's, there have been study after study after study that shows that it's really not bad for you. So the fact that Gerber's putting it in as a preservative is not necessarily a bad thing. It just, again, goes to things are becoming more processed mm -hmm. and things are being added for preservation and shelf life um, so that it can sit in a grocery store longer. And the pot pies. Right. Out come the pot pies. The turkey, the chicken, cents. the beef. Right? Mm. Yeah. Still delicious. Uh, yeah. I don't know they'd go that far. Well, but the crust. I always eat the crust. Yeah. The crust. <laughs> Banana cream pie. I just think this was cool. Yeah. <laughs> we did a survey of the armed services. <laughs> <laughs> It's so random, like, okay, banana cream pie, favorite dessert of our U.S. Armed Services in 1951. And how do you not like banana cream pie? No, it is good. I love I agree. pie. It's delicious. The National Cheese Treaty, we talked about cheese oh, a yeah. second ago. Like, this was really a big deal. Um, lots of, especially in France, because a lot of aged cheese, the blue cheeses, oh, yeah. they, they take their, their food pretty serious in France, and they were having issues with Americans calling their cheese cheese mm -hmm. so there was some pretty big arguments about it and the cheese treaty was signed in 1951. first yeah. color beer tv commercial paps your dad's beer right paps blue PBR. ribbon pb army yes was advertised looking very happy drinking their beer right william kellogg passed away um, there's a great book you can check out. I'm sure the library has it called The Battling... Yes, The Battling Kellogg Brothers The Battling or Kellogg yes. Brothers. I it's mean, a great book. List. It's a story about mm -hmm. the two Kellogg Brothers and the Kelloggs and, and mm -hmm. their lifelong feud. It was pretty interesting. It's a good book. Super rich, but yeah. yeah. 52, <laughs> Mr. Potato Head. <laughs> I mean, technically not a food, but, you know, <laughs> But it was fun. literally a potato. Like, I had the plastic head yeah. oh, that yeah. you put the lips and all the stuff. Oh, yeah. It was a literal yeah. potato you would take and put a face on. That's yeah. awesome. Who thought of that? Sugar-free, no-calorie <laughs> drinks, sodas. Ooh. Right? And the picture is so hysterical to me. Oh, my God, I know. Like, the look on her face. She's like... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what do you mean it won't fit? Yeah. And we do talk about locale drinks later on in the presentation. Um, and I just, we just pointed out this is sugar free ginger ale specifically for diabetic patients at this point. Right. But it's going to change a little bit later. Lipton's onion soup mix. I think that stuff is still around, isn't it? You can make the dip. Oh, yeah. Like that person did. I actually never have had the soup. Oh, I have no idea what I, it would taste yeah, like. Yeah, I haven't either. <laughs> I've just always made it the dip. I know. Yeah. Maybe it's good. I don't know. Sugared Frosted Flakes, because Frosted Flakes have been around for a long time mm -hmm. at this point, again, Mr. Kellogg, but now adding sugar to it. That's something else that we inadvertently tracked was mm -hmm. sugary cereals mm -hmm. and, and their mm -hmm. predominance. Frozen fish sticks. It was really hard finding a picture of Mrs. <laughs> Paul's like fish sticks, so it's not yeah. the, it's a little small and I apologize, but we really did try. Um, but yeah, General Foods Bird's Eye, the fish sticks. Yeah, and Preem. Anybody ever tried Preem? Anybody ever had it? It was primarily a, a European beverage that came over a little bit here, not too um, popular, but it was one of the first of its kind because it was instant, and that was the big deal. Again, moving towards convenience right. and simplicity. It just sounds gross, though. So. It, yeah. 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 Cheese whiz. Here it is. <laughs> More cheese food. Here we are. Yeah. Um, 1953, cheese whiz. Cheese whiz. And, well, I mean, you get the can, right? Like... You could just uh, and spray it in your mouth, yeah. yeah. But they used it for Welsh rarebit, which I had a 1950s mm -hmm. food party at my house pre-pandemic. And one of my friends actually brought mm -hmm. the Welsh rarebit. And it's kind of like fondue almost, it in is. as much as you dip stuff into it. It was pretty good. Yeah. It's not rabbit, it's rarebit. It's rarebit, so, yeah. 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 
um, frozen French fried potatoes. Mm -mm -mm. Right? Can you imagine? Like, fries are everywhere now. But back then, that was fairly new. Um, when did they hit it big? 1965? Yep. Man named Ray Kroc. Yes. Well, Bought. Does anybody yes. know who that is or who that was? McDonald's. McDonald's. Oh, wow. He was the one that invented the franchise and drive through service and really um, standardized that whole process. One of my college professors' moms had dated him when they were in high school. I mean, could you imagine? Like, yeah. you dated him? <laughs> like, yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. It is awesome. So funny. Right? White rose tea. Again, instant, instant tea, tea powder. Party powder. Which I've never understood. Tea's pretty basic all it on is. its own. I honestly never had instant tea or instant coffee for that matter. I've so had instant coffee to, much to my And I know of. Maybe I have and doesn't know it. Yeah. I don't know. Oh, I think you you I don't. probably have. Oh, yeah, you think you know. I <laughs> James Craft. Mm. Yep. Craft Foods. Um, so the Agricultural Research Service from the USDA. They did some research before this, but it wasn't very standardized and it wasn't really codified in any way. It was just kind of like, we'll research some of this over here, and we'll do some of this over here. But this really kind of all put it together under one office and made it like official. Charlie the Tuna, Star, yep. Star Kissed Foods, it changes its name. And uh, they had, I just love this, the largest tuna processing plant in the world mm -hmm. to make you your Charlie Sun Kiss or yeah. Star Kiss. Chicken of the sea. What's right? the best tuna? Chicken, Chicken of the yeah. sea. Yes. Fifty-four. <gasps> Look so, at that. Yes, <laughs> the farms. Yep. The reason we we put this up there is because again we started in the twenties and at that point it was like ten percent, maybe thirteen percent of farms had electricity. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Most so did they, not have phones. Wasn't they, that like no, really didn't. low, like two yeah, percent or like, something yeah, ridiculous? Yeah, something two, really three, low. Four, but yeah. They they had cars and tractors though. Um, but at this point. Most of them have electricity. Um, the biggest thing that really helped the farmers when they got electricity was they were able to have indoor plumbing. Because without electricity, you can't run the well to pump the water into the house. So, yeah. Yeah, no. So. Know. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, this guy, Jolly Green Giant, first TV appearance. He'd been around for a little while, but he got kind of a promotion from just the print materials, yeah. and he showed up on TV. Yep. Look at and, him. And the 50s really became the, the, the decade of electric appliances for the home. It looks so cool, though. I, I love that aesthetic, though. Yeah. I wouldn't necessarily want it in my kitchen, but I really do love that color blue, and that I think it's so cool. Because before then, it was either black or white. Right. So this was the first time that they introduced the color palette mm -hmm. to it, and, and they kind of lost it in the 70s with the avocado green. Yeah. We had... Yeah. Um, we had harvest gold at my house but you could choose from like mm -hmm. burnt orange avocado green and um harvest gold and my mother picked harvest gold yeah. and i didn't realize there was anything else besides harvest gold yeah yeah it was, it was awesome yeah it was yeah and and you'll see a lot of this too so after the war because that was in the 40s you know the all the gis came back and the factories were in full force and they needed jobs so mm -hmm. that's what they did is they made appliances mm -hmm. and they all went to the kitchen and there was a concerted effort by the government to, to manufacture these so that it would be more convenient for the housewife so that having left the job, Rosie went back home, so it was easier for her. And that was kind of the, mm -hmm. the trade-off that was made. I, I'm not sure it was a good one. I don't know about that, but yeah. yeah. <laughs> but also more instant foods, a little bit less on your plate, so to speak, yeah. and you could have more exactly. free time to, you know, right. hang. All right, Swanson 94. TV dinner, yes! 98 cents, wow. right? And it was actually somebody, uh, the turkey farmer, they had too much leftover turkey. Yep. And they're like, what do we do with all this leftover turkey? Make a convenient meal in a nice tin foil with the tin. I loved those as a kid. It was like a, a tree. It was. You get like the Salisbury steak and like the chocolate thing Plain. and yep. the corn and the mashed potatoes yep. and the corn would like go over Always. a little. Yeah. Oh, yeah. No, yep. that, was a, that, was, that was awesome. Instant mashed potato flakes. So gross. Not I, as good. <laughs> not as exciting as you no, think. <laughs> no. Um, one of, uh, when I was a kid, my cousin would sit with a box of them and a spoon and just eat them straight oh, out of the box. I remember you saying that. It's and it person. grossed me out every single time. Like, Debbie, what are you doing? She loved it. She absolutely loved it. So a uh, carnation instant milk, non-fat dry milk intro is introduced. Um, I remember being, must have been 77, I was in kindergarten, I was a brownie, and the brownie troop leader had instant milk. I had no idea what it was. Mm -hmm. 
I was like, what? Like, I, I mean, she was like putting like, in, and I had no idea what it was. And it was disgusting. <laughs> I have not drank it in the intervening yeah. 46 years. So, um, but it, it, there it is. Well, and before this, it was available as an ingredient for large manufacturers. So nonfat powdered milk was a thing. It was already around, but this is really the first time it was, it was packaged and marketed for home use which is a pretty big deal if you think about it. Well, the milkman was still making his, mm -hmm. you know, pointed rounds. Absolutely. So, yeah. Yep. Peanut M&Ms. Yes. Right? Those are relatively the, I still like them. I, I love, love M&Ms. M &Ms. Well, the actual M&Ms came out during the war mm -hmm. for our soldiers serving yep. overseas so they'd get their ration pack, they'd get beer, they'd get like cigarettes, uh, tinned meat and M&Ms. And M&Ms. There, what else do you be need? Because milk chocolate melts in your mouth, not in your hand, and that's why the M&Ms were invented in the first place. Yeah. Oh, here he here is, Ray Kroc. Speaking of, yep. so yeah, um, Deplane, I hope De Plaine, I'm hoping yeah. I'm saying that correctly, Illinois. Um, 15 cents for burger and french fries are 10 cents, but just revolutionized, obviously, like Keegan yeah. said, the drive through the, so if you ever see like an old timey menu for McDonald's, I also love seeing McDonald's like from the 70s and 80s, like when I was a kid, <laughs> and I remember they had the tree. Yeah. <laughs> And like our parents would be there like smoking cigarettes and the little tin ashtrays and we'd yep. be like around the tree. Yep. It was quite a good time, clearly. It was. <laughs> yep. Microwave oven, thirteen hundred dollars for it. a microwave Ding. oven. Thirteen hundred dollars. <laughs> right? And, and it had to be the size of a Buick. Right? <laughs> they were huge. I that thing. Jesus. They took up the entire counter. But now you've got some Swanson TV dinners to throw in there to, yeah, yeah, you know, you do. to heat up and yeah. yeah. Now, I, I know I always get hate. I don't care. I love the green bean bake at Thanksgiving with the little <laughs> onions on top. I think it's delicious. It I is, don't care. And this was, these researchers developed it. And, of course, Campbell's Soup, brilliant. They actually would put out cookbooks yeah. of meals you can make with their soups. I mean, I, I thought they were absolutely, I actually have one. It's like for the gentleman bachelor. And one of the things <laughs> was when the gentleman bachelor had a party, he would serve hot broth to his guests. Mm -hmm. That's, that's cool. Like, like you do. Uh, absolutely. Right? You meet that somebody, was... when you meet me at the door, you better be bringing some hot broth. Absolutely. Or I'm turning around and I'm leaving. Absolutely. So. Yeah. <laughs> oh, um, here's my favorite. Here it is. <laughs> it <laughs> is. We, this one, we're, both of us were like, what? Oh, this made me so happy. Yeah. Quaker giving away land deeds wow. in its box of puffed rice. What? Uh, Alaska. Uh, Alaska. Yeah. <laughs> the Klondike, to be exact. That was wild. Like, can you imagine you open up your puffed rice cereal and there's a land deed? Like, cool. Yeah. That'd be amazing. Yeah, but then you got to go get it. True. <laughs> <laughs> but still, yeah. like, I own land in Alaska. Yeah. I'm not sure I'd want to do that. No. I wonder if it's like that thing now where you can buy an acre of land in Scotland. Oh, I know people who did that. Yeah, right? yeah, yeah. So yeah. probably 20,000 people probably bought the same, like, you know, square. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. probably. Del Monte pineapple grapefruit drink. And this, this was kind of, I, like, I don't do grapefruit. So Neither. the pineapple would maybe make it a bit sweeter, but... I can't do grapefruit. No. Yeah. But notice on the top of the can that there's a can opener on it. Oh, wow. Oh. Right? That's so, nice. Yeah. It's convenient. Yeah. Drink it in your car on the way home from the shop. Right. There you go. So, um, so some of you know me. Um, I wrote a, a book about Michigan beer history, and the library does have it. They're huge supporters of local authors and are wonderful. Absolutely. Um, but so I do, I do feel compelled to introduce beer tidbits whenever possible. I did not realize Bush beer did not come out to the, till 55. I kind of felt like it always had been. Like, and they might have brewed before Prohibition. I honestly don't know. But um, the Bavari I think it's just so fancy. Bush Bavarian beer. It's a lager. And it is a true American yeah. lager. It's exactly what it's supposed to be. Yeah. So good for it. I, I wonder if they ate the largest clam. Oh, you know somebody did. They That's probably fried clam. it. They ate so, 750 pounds of clam. That's a lot of clam. It's a lot of chowder. Yes. <laughs> I love clam chowder. It is good. Chock full of nuts. Talk about strong coffee. I don't think I've ever had it. I Ooh, don't know. Very strong. Have to give a nod to Anthony Bourdain. Absolutely have he to. was born in 1956, yep. passed away not that long ago, no. um, unfortunately. Um, another famous chef is uh, Chen Kenichi. He was the Chinese chef, he was the longest one on there. And yeah. the, the show Iron Chef actually started in Japan yeah. and it came over, it was in the 
That should, we should include that. You probably should. We, I feel we'll like have to it was research that one. a little more recent, though. Um, it wasn't the 50s. No, it, it came over um, just about 10 years ago. Yeah, I, it was not maybe that long ago. Maybe, maybe 15, 20, 50, yeah. But not that long ago. But it's been around forever. And if you can get a chance to see some of the old original Japanese versions, they're hysterical. Try and find them somewhere. They are so fun. <laughs> and that's yeah. him. There he is. Yep. So... I just thought this was funny. It was called Marion Barry. It's actually a berry. And I remember the politician, remember Marion Barry, mm -hmm. the politician from DC? Yeah. And I just thought that was introdu like interesting that like they actually this became the most popular blackberry. And I just never thought of fruits. Mm -hmm. And this does come up from time to time. Mm -hmm. Like there's the most popular like strawberry or apple. Right. But right. blackberry. So yeah. Marion Barry, introduced in fifty six, became the most popular. So probably if you're picking random blackberries in random places, it could be Marion Berry. It could be. Oh. Although technically it's not a berry. Oh, it's, that's right. It's a bramble. We're picking because bits. it's got the, the 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 individual clusters, and you pluck it you pluck it off the the cone, so it's a bramble. Oh. It's technically not a berry. But raspberry would still be a berry, right? Nope. It's no, a it's a bramble too, because it's yep. got the little. Okay. Yep. Um, raspberries, blackberries, Marion berries, um, mulberries. Okay. Because they all come off a cone and have the the cluster of. Unlike a strawberry, Unlike a, which okay. also is technically, botanically, not a berry either, right? Like it's like this is the weirdness of food. Yeah, we won't even get into the Supreme Court and they're mucking around with food. Oh yeah, that comes up a couple yeah. times yeah. <laughs> throughout the decades. The Whopper. The Whopper. Yes. Right. The Whopper's the been around for a while. I've never been a Burger King guy. I like the onion rings, as a, and I still do if I don't really eat them. If I'm but. going onion rings, I'm going A and W. Okay, fair. Yeah, you're right. Yeah. You're right. You're right. Yep. Styrofoam ice chests, so, right? And I think some of that styrofoam is probably still around. <laughs> It'll be around long yeah. after we're gone. Remember the Oleo Margarine Act we got rid of? Well, despite all that, margarine sales are still exceeding butter sales, yes. which yep. I think there's no substitution for butter. Absolutely but not. It's, it's a chef's prerogative and, and purview in the world to add more butter whenever possible. Mm -hmm. Just if you can, do it. Tang, right? Tang comes really become a lot in the 70s, but this is when it was introduced, 1957. And anybody ever had Tang? Oh. I just, it was kind of grainy. Like it's I always felt it was grainy. grainy. Like it yeah. was, it was, yeah, it was interesting. Yeah. Like, yeah. So I didn't know Dairy Queen had food this early. I just always thought of Dairy Queen as where we'd get the cone. I had no idea in 57, they actually introduced their hot eats to go with their cool treats. Like, I had no idea. So there we go. Now we all know. Trivia yep. question. Yep. The other thing that we realized that we tracked a lot was chickens. Mm -hmm. And we're not really sure why. There was, <laughs> Things I mean, just strike our just, fancy. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe it was the Colonel Sanders connection. Oh, Colonel right? Sanders was watching. But um, the poultry inspection standards for um, moving chickens between state lines. And if you think about it, like, why is that a big deal? Right? But... <laughs> Because we weren't, we weren't shipping food as far back then. You were able to access more local food. And, oh. and now we're moving it across state lines. Right. So for the public health, they started the inspection process. And what if you send like a, ch a sick chicken or something exactly. and somebody gets sick? Yep. So yeah, I feel yeah. better knowing that. Which um, you remember, was it last year? There was the like stupid expensive chicken. Yes. Um, because the avian flu took out. Yes. And then if one of your chickens had it, all of them had to get killed. Yep. So yeah. my friend's a farmer. Yeah. So this is, I mean, it's pretty important. Mm -hmm. Yep. IHOP. <laughs> the International House of Pancakes. you got to love IHOP. God, America's yeah. great. Yep. That is amazing. And I love canned cat treats. Right? Like, so this is also, we, we didn't really track this one. but <laughs> We because, should have. We, we really should. Yeah, right? Because who, like canned cat treats. Not canned cat food. No, no, no. Canned cat treats. Yeah. yeah, yeah. The beginning of the multi-billion-dollar pet industry. I and it was something yeah. else that was interesting. I mean, pets just ate table scraps. Like I never thought mm -hmm. about that. And then we just created this entire industry to feed our pets, which mm -hmm. my dog is delighted. I mean, the dog oh, yeah. loves his chicky nuggy treats he gets. Yeah. So no, he's yeah. Delighted. My cat wakes me at three o'clock in the morning every Ooh. morning for food. Yeah, I mean, I'm usually up then anyway. But rice aroni, the rice San Francisco aroni. treat. I love right? rice aroni. It is really good. You mean Slaughter Act is yeah. passed? Well, that's good. You yeah. know, protect the meat, protect us, protect the meat packers. Right. So, all right, not bad. We approve.
Yep. Cocoa Puffs. Here it comes. Here comes more of the sugar cereal. 43% sugar. <laughs> That's wild, man. <laughs> Cocoa Krispies, 45%. Just like... like <laughs> Oh, when, when we found that, Patty and I were like, no. That's wild. Like, really? Like, that's an unfathomable amount of sugar. We verify and, this stuff. We have a two-step verification process yeah, where, like, yeah. we find something, and then we double Google yep. it, and then we do And so, like, it's as true as it can be. I mean, it, there's yeah. always going to be, you know, right? but, yeah, no, no, no. That <laughs> yeah, but that one threw us for a loop. Um, but then at the low? same time, yeah, yeah the sweet, sweet low. Sweet low, right behind it. Right. <laughs> because we can't get enough sugar. So, and now there's that thing, it's like a, it's a fruit and they, it's really finely distilled. I can't think of what the fruit is, but the it's jackfruit? like that. Yes. I've had that sugar substitute. I yeah, was going to regular sugar, but in Anybody ever seen qualities. a jackfruit? You know what? They're huge. They're ginormous. How and they're a sugar one. substitute. Um, so one of my favorite things in the world, peanut butter, uh, Jif Creamy and Country uh, and Crunchy Peanut Butters hit the market in this country in 1958. Um, I adore peanut butter. I have yeah. it at least once a day, mm -hmm. sometimes more than once a day. I'll um, take a spoon. I know. I will literally like walk like, past it. I'll put the spoon yeah, in the peanut yeah. butter, keep walking and eat yeah. the peanut butter as Absolutely. I walk in my living room. And I'm 51 years old and I will do that to the day I die because it's, it's delicious. peanut butter. So yeah, absolutely. It's got to be Jif. I mean, oh, I, I'm, okay. I'm pretty open on that. Your pan's okay, but for me, it's got to be Jeff. We we had the velvet peanut butter, the fresh, pure, oh, delicious. Yeah. Remember that stuff? Yep. It's back. Oh, yeah. Like they brought it yep. back. So, yep. Oh, so, here's the cola. Yep, RC cola. Diet right. Um, because before there was diet drinks just for the diabetic, the, the diabetic. For friends who were diabetic, right. right? So now we're going to to market it to the masses, which is. Yeah, we'll talk a bit about marketing in a minute. But. Yeah, and that's something else we noticed. Like in the 60s in particular, that's um, 60s, 70s Weight Watchers and that sort of mm -hmm. stuff started showing up. And we had really not seen that. Like mm -hmm. earlier, I mean, the 20s and 30s, nobody was talking about low-cal. There was some. A little just bit. Eat but less, exercise yeah, more. Yeah, that was, the, right, that right? was that advice we got yeah. that we hadn't found an article. It's like to lose weight, eat less, exercise more. Done. That was it. That was the article. Yeah. Um, but then like the low-cal yeah. and this kind of sugar-free stuff yeah. <laughs> never been a fan of well sugar just pop, don't eat but... cocoa puffs with 45 yeah, percent sugar right <laughs> mind-blowing here it comes Thirty-two thousand grocery stores in the country now grocery stores were invented in the 30s so in 30 years i'm sorry 20 years almost yeah. that's a lot of grocery stores because until was it 36 who was the 30s uh, maybe 34 Somewhere, mm -hmm. you know, early to mid thirties, the King Cullen grocery store in yes. Queens, New York. Yes. Remember yes, that? Yes, I yep. remember that. It was the very first grocery store. Yep. Um, so in not a whole lot of time frame, we have a lot of grocery stores. Because before then, you didn't, ha they just weren't around. You went to the local green grocer. Green grocer. You and the dry you, goods. Or you grew your own food. Right. Right. The butcher, the cheesemonger, yep. you went yep. to all these. And now it's all in one. I mean, it is kind of exciting. You're like, oh, my gosh, it's in yep. one place. It so is. There is, for your <laughs> enjoyment, we found numerous pictures of Spam. Uh, one billion cans of Spam are sold. Um, you have your Spam bean, spam bean Bake. Right. For a take-it-easy day service. And spam and Cheese Ribbon Loaf. That's beautiful. Yum. Come on. That's a work of art. Right? I mean, I couldn't do that if you had a gun in my That's amazing. Yeah. I mean, get up, it's spam. Oh, what's that sizzling sound I hear? Get up, it's spam and eggs, my dear. Right yeah. there. Yeah. I mean, right? looks so, like eyes. It's and what's even funny, spam is still incredibly popular. Where? Hawaii. 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 Which became, I'm trying to, oh, I know why I put them. Like, did I think that was spam? No, this is haagen dazs haagen dazs ice cream is, is developed yep. in 1959. Yep. Yeah, do you know what haagen dazs means? picture. Absolutely nothing. nothing. It just sounded cool. Absolutely nothing. <laughs> it was a marketing ploy that they came up with. Hey, that sounds really good. Let's use it. Wow. And that's it sounds fancy. It You're like, I'm eating. Yeah. I mean, when I was a kid, it's like I'm eating Hagen Dazs. Right. Like, that's really yes. elegant. Yeah. You know, it's compared to like Briar or whatever. Like, oh, right. awesome. Yeah. So Little Caesars mm -hmm. Pizza. Right. Now back then they didn't have the five dollar special. No. <laughs> no. But Little Caesars back then was like the real deal. They made the dough. Oh, I yeah. To, um, a friend of yep. mine used to work there when he was a kid, and they made the dough. Mm -hmm. They made the sauce. They sourced the cheese locally. Like, it was like real, real pizza. Yeah. What's the connection between Spam and Hawaii? Yep, I got two words for you Pearl Harbor. The base. 
They ate it there? Yep. Or? The army base. Ooh. Is that where it came from? Like yeah. they. That's and they so sent popular. it to the troops, right? Yep. Okay, because I know they canned beer and sent it to them, so the troops also. Yeah. It's also very popular in the Philippines. It is, yes. But um, the, because of the, the prevalence of the, of the armed forces, they shipped the spam because that was part of what they ate. It became so popular because a lot of the GI stayed in the area, and the families just picked it up and they ran with it. That and you'll see it in really, really fancy restaurants in Hawaii, like spam is on the menu, and it's expensive. Because it's, they make it a gourmet thing. It's the weirdest thing I've ever seen. The one that, that really grosses me out and it's not available is Sperky. Oh, Spam Turkey? Uh, yeah. <laughs> Human beings are amazing. Yes, we are. <laughs> we yes, are amazing. Yes, we Give are. us some time, man. Yep. And, and I just realized Colonel Sanders, we, we, didn't, we, we, uh, we, we dropped them. the ball. I don't yeah, know. We'll have to yeah. go back and look. All right. Recipes. Keegan, so this is one you. of the things that we noticed as we were doing this is the change in way, the way recipes mm -hmm. are written mm -hmm. over a period of time. And if you this look at some of these, good. this one's still okay. Um, we can, but they'll, they'll write out tablespoonfuls of something or the, the directions won't be really clear because they assume you know what you're talking about already. <laughs> or if you don't, your cook does. Although at this point, there aren't too many cooks anymore. No. People don't have a cook. They're usually doing it themselves, which is why they've got a microwave oven. Right. Right. And I'm, this, the 50s recipes are amazing. There's an entire book called The Gallery of Re Regrettable Food. <laughs> um, I own it. I should have brought it. It's, yeah. You can find it online. But I don't think this sounds appealing. There's grapefruit, orange, blueberries. Oh, no, wait, not just grapefruit. Canned. Oh, I'm sorry. Grapefruit. Canned grapefruit to make it even yummier with yeah. mayonnaise and grated cheese. That does not appeal to me personally, but... No. I don't know. So no, me neither. it's interesting. No, nope, condensed. Oh, the crab meat. Oh, gratin. Right. And we'll see. The other thing that we noticed in the recipes was the introduction of pre-prepared things, mm -hmm. like the canned grapefruit or the condensed cream of celery soup or um, the, the ready-to-eat cereal, oh, such yeah. as puff rice or corn. So before, the recipes were just the ingredients. And now they're actually using other things in there, which we found really, really interesting. Mm -hmm. Just to make it a little more convenient, right. you know, in our pink kitchens. Right. So, Irish stew, spinach. That sounds kind of good. Yeah, spinach and mock sour cream. No. That just sounds <laughs> pro. Like, why not just use real sour cream? <laughs> There's yeah. no need to get yogurt and horseradish yeah. involved in this. Yeah, no, 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 so no, no, if no. yogurt's not available, no, use evaporated no, 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 milk no. soured with lemon. <laughs> yeah. yeah, why? No, 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 can't do it. Oh, yeah, here are some cookbooks <laughs> that we enjoyed. There's um, the Busy Woman's Cookbook. That's cool. Food Fashion for 57. Mm -hmm. uh, the Port Metropolitan of, Cookbook. The Stork Goes Continental. So we yeah. don't, I don't know. I thought of like a stork delivering babies. I don't know. Um, this is Sour Cream, the gourmet touch to everyday cooking. And she has a cake, and she has a green salad with sour cream in the middle. Um, that looks like a cup of white and is that I mean what is that there's no sour cream in this dish so I don't know it's probably milk and then this probably is not. like something with I don't know sour cream but yeah, yeah. and then the portal to good cooking look at those <laughs> illustrations yeah. are wonderful the other thing that we noticed with the cookbooks especially is now that we have all these appliances coming out the appliance companies wrote their own cookbooks so if you bought, let's say, a freezer, it would come with a cookbook mm -hmm. to teach you what you could put in the freezer. Or if you bought yes. a new range, it would have the recipe so that you could effectively use it. Because again, there was a transition from wood stoves right. not that long ago mm -hmm. to electric mm -hmm. appliances. So, and a lot of people, especially busy moms, didn't know what to do with them or how to use them appropriately. So the companies put out cookbooks so that they would t train you on what you could use the oven for, and it was, and they're wild. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they're absolutely wild. It comes a cookbook. Oh yeah, yep. I think I yep. have one of those. Oh, some ads <laughs> from the fifties. It's very nurturing. Yeah. There's the smooth taste, expectant mother's cray. It's from Europe. This is not. It's from Europe. So there's that. Yeah. Oh, but then here's Lucy and Desi. <laughs> I know. Right. Yeah. Yeah. No cigarette hangover <laughs> tomorrow. Which I didn't know. I mean, I've never smoked. I've never so smoked. I have no I, I idea. Didn't know there but was. it is. A, it's a stimulant, so yeah. it might. But yeah, I've never so smoked I guess either. That makes sense. No, yeah. I find it. Yeah. It's not my thing. Oh yeah, more more doctors. More doctors. Camel. camel. 
right? I yeah. love listening to old timey radio shows, and they'll actually have like commercials in there, mm -hmm. and they always talk about Camel's T Zone. It's very gentle on your throat, and the doctor will be on there saying, "I'm Doctor So and So," and I tell all my <laughs> patients, "Well, I'm like, you know, I'm like, oh my god, so yeah. like, yeah. whoa, yep, oh, real yeah. soap pads." So my girlfriend Jilly calls these medicated. She's like, "I need a medicated pad." I'm like, "A, a what?" <laughs> And then she'll pull out the Brillo pads, and, and I'm like, oh, okay, now I know what you mean. Yeah. yeah. This wouldn't go over well with me. Christmas no. morning, she'll be happier with a Hoover. No. 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 Eh, I don't no. know about that. But the look on her face is look one of just joy. I know. Right? No one's like, ever, like, find someone who looks at you the way she's looking at that Hoover, man, yes, because that is absolutely. amazing. So, yep. oh, yeah, this thing. I can't even pronounce it. Lucozade? It's glucose it's yeah. a glucose drink so as yeah. far as we can tell it's literally sugar. sugar water yeah it might be flavored with maybe something lemonish i mean i can never read the... no we couldn't really read it but, uh, but I they like both look sugar. happy and yeah. why wouldn't they because they're drinking sugar <laughs> exactly right yep smirnoff vodka has been around forever mm -hmm. right good stuff yep pepsi and what we've never figured out with the connection between the 50s and 7 Up is they love 7 Up. I mean, the small child instead of a bottle of milk, no, <laughs> have some 7 Up, Junior, right? and you will like it. Yeah, they love 7 Up. Oh, what do we watch on TV? Right, and I remember watching all of those shows. I mean, not originally, I mean, <laughs> you know, but reruns. Right, like I was in the kid because I we had old, old black and white TV. Yeah, me yeah. TV. We get randomly through yeah. the air. So. Yeah, I'd, I'd wake up early before school and watch oh, yeah. Little Rascals or Mickey Mouse Club. Mm hmm. These are some outfits. Yeah. <laughs> the dresses are cute. Yeah. Kind of. I have my little fifties dress on. I love so. that they have a matching parasol. Though. That that just takes it that extra step. I didn't yeah. quite go that far when I bought yeah. this dress. I'm like, yeah, this is enough. I think so. You should, yeah, you should do that. I know. I'll yeah. do that next time. Right. <laughs> I love those. Those for the, for shorts the are gentlemen. the bomb, aren't they? Gentlemen. Yeah. With the I socks. Need, I need a Come pair on. of those. No. I don't need a pair of those. And they are like the classiest, stylist people. Look with the the, ja the coats and the heels. I could not look that sophisticated. They do look very sophisticated, don't they? I, I could not. Yeah. No way. Yep. That's all right, though. And they're fascinators and just just um, out, out and about on town. The glasses. I the love bebop those glasses. glasses. Not just glasses. Bebop glasses. This is, they glitter. But apparently they don't have a prescription. <laughs> so they're just glass. Like Not you me. would just wear glasses. Which, as someone who's had to wear glasses since I was 10 years old, I, I've never understood that. Like, I, I don't, yeah, I don't either. Can't see all. Yeah. And that's just kind of the smart, like the businesswoman kind of looking yeah. dresses over there. Hairstyles. Right. James Dean, of course. The Breakfast at Tiffany's. Yep. The ever perm, which I've never, I mean, I, I don't have hair, so I don't have to worry about it. But. <laughs> I used to get a perm in the 80s. I'll have to find a picture and bring it in for the 80s. Yeah, it that was would be just as amazing as you would imagine. Right? Cars. Cars. I mean, they when we so talk cool. about cars in the U.S., talk about beautiful. I know. Look like, at them. They just, they've never made them like that since, and I don't know why, because they're just beautiful. You could go to the McDonald's. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. Yep. Yeah. yeah, they're absolutely. And they're, I mean, the lines on them, the shapes, they're just beautiful. The colors. Yep. And maybe not that so, but. No, oh, well, yeah, but. Yeah. But that Corvette, I'll take one of those. Yeah. In a heartbeat. Uh-huh. God, I went overboard with the cars. And I guess I really like 50 cars. Like, oh, it's my picture. Yeah, again, they're, <laughs> they're just beautiful. It sort of relates to dining because you drive your car to the Absolutely. McDonald's. So yeah, there you go. You got to go to the drive-in for the, there you go. the car yes. hop. Right? Yes, for the Happy Days car hop. Yep. Yes, yes, yep. yes. So. And we had fun. Uh, Jerry Lee Lewis, Everly Brothers, Buddy Holly. They're playing Chinese checkers. I loved Chinese checkers as a kid. So, yep. and let's see. And all kinds of cocktail parties. Yep. Yep. There's Jazz a little sock copy thing. Yep. I, like, what Bizarre are the hats? Like, the rabbits hats kind of creep on their hats. But we had fun. We had yeah. fun, Keegan. I don't, he's not, I'm not sure if he's having fun or, or he's terrified. <laughs> or he's like, why are you making me wear this hat? I'm, I'm not sure which. Oh, the Tigers and the Lions were the world's champions what? in 1957. The, the Look only, at it. The only time. That's it. Yeah. 
That's it. That's the yep, last time, and that was it. It'll happen. It Before will. I die, mm, it's better. Uh, yeah. <laughs> okay, so all the parties <laughs> kind of looked like this. So um, squirt, when you can't get 7-Up, you got your squirt. I think that's awesome. They're putting the squirt in the carved out watermelon that has watermelon and melon balls floating in it. That is creative. Right. And again, remember we mentioned that barbecues and grilling became really popular. This was what they looked like. So you went over someone's house and they had this set up out in their backyard. And really what they were doing was grilling because barbecuing takes days to do it right. So this was a, they were grilling out and they had, I love the wheelbarrow with something in it with the ice to keep it cool. And all the all the fresh fruit, like mm -hmm. the, the watermelon basket, the pineapple basket cut out. Yeah, and there's sherbet, or yeah. however you say it, yeah. sherbet or sherbert, yeah. as we used to say it, sherbert, in the fruit. They really liked 7-Up, as seven we up. mentioned. You and can make a 7-Up cake with 7-Up icing. And I've had 7-Up cake, and it is pretty good. The 7-Up is used as a replacement for the um, leavening, the baking soda and baking powder. Because it's got bubbles. Okay. Right? So I, I get it. But seven up dressing? Salad. Yeah, dressing is weird. I would agree with you. It has yeah. flour, sugar, salt, dry mustard, eggs, vinegar, and two bottles of 7-Up. Two. 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 And yeah. then there's the Jello. Because yeah. there's always oh, room for J-E-L-L-O. -L -L yeah. um, yes, I really like 7-Up. Um, well, because you got to have 7-Up icing with your 7-Up cake. Yes. Two egg whites, granulated sugar, three That's, tablespoons of 7-Up, and cream of tartar. Yeah, I could eat. Yeah, I'll eat that. That's cool. Yeah, I, I mean, do that. Okay. Dressing, no. But, oh, yeah. see, really, a little trick that makes a treat. 7-Up and milk. Yeah. As you do. Right? <laughs> it's a wholesome combination. 7-Up and milk. Who thought of that? And yeah. the kid's like, ha, ha, ha. The kid is just delighted. But you notice it's someone that's drawn because no real kid yeah, in their right mind like, would drink that stuff. Milk. Yeah. Oh. yeah, we also yeah. found that there was some food we were like, what? We don't know. So this is the jello. This is carrots, peas, pickles, olives. I don't know what this is. I don't know what that is. It yeah, looks like we, red pepper maybe in a jello salad. We were, we were not no. clear on what they were trying to, to do with this. So this one we thought maybe it was like a green bean bake with jello with peaches Tomato maybe. Tomato <laughs> jello. Like, we weren't Bam. really sure. Like a hash, maybe? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the one on top, we still aren't Don't real know. sure about. There's sausage, I think. So it might be glumkies. Oh, cabbage right? rolls. Okay. So it might be glumkies, but we're yeah. not really sure if that's baked beans in the middle. But I see some toothpicks hanging, sticking out. Right. So I don't know if it's like, we weren't really sure. And then that thing... It, we, we think these are potatoes, oh, yes. like red potatoes. Asparagus. And, asp and asparagus with uh, Parmesan cheese. That's what it was, I think. I think we figured it out. It just yeah, looks weird. The, the orchid in the back makes it yeah, elegant. It does. It does. Right? And the champagne or yeah. whatever. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I really don't know. Um, <laughs> so this is like cream. This was one of those like soup kind of recipe things. You put cream soup over whatever the hell that is, meat loaf <laughs> thing with little sausage things, whatever, yeah. around. Um, I've seen this a hundred times. Yep. It never does not delight me. It's like pepper pimento in like a white creamy thing in a jello mold with peas in the middle of it. And you would slice it and eat it like a bunt cake. That's the 50s. The one that gets me is the hard boiled eggs in jello. Yeah, that is weird. Yeah. Like, I just, yeah. with the tomatoes, the fresh tomato slices around to make you, it more. You know, some well-meaning like, mom, like, made that for dinner and was yeah. so excited. And, and then, we think it's broccoli in the bottom. Like, the, this, no, this section yeah. is, was broccoli, but we weren't really sure. No. It's better yeah. not to guess, Keegan. Uh, we just, don't even, we assume this is meatloaf with yes. mashed potatoes on top. Yeah. Doesn't so it? it could, yeah, it could be like a shepherd's pie kind of a thing going on, but it just looks weird. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's just bizarre. So So that's what we've got for you tonight. Thanks, Patty. Thank you, King. And thank you for joining thank us you. on Friday night. Appreciate it. We know that there's like a hundred other things you could do. So thank you, thank you so much for joining us. And we'll be back with the sixties this summer. Yep. And then we will make it to the eighties this year by the end of the year. I think we will.